Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to show you how to wire up your own automatic transfer switch or it's also called an ATS. So to start with, what's an automatic transfer switch? Well, the job of one of these is to uh, transfer a load to either one power source or another power source. So in the example of solar, maybe we have solar power and we have mains power and we need to choose either one or the other to power the load. So the way I'm going to do this is using two contactors. So contactors have various ratings and the one we're interested in, well there's a couple we're interested in, but the primary one is amperage. How much amperage can it uh, contact without getting damaged? And this particular one is around 25 amps. Um, it says 25 but um, I expect to transfer no more than 13 amps so this is ideal for what I want. So the other thing we need to uh, be concerned with is the coil voltage. The way these things work is that you power a coil and then when the coil is powered it contacts everything and when the coil is not powered it discontacts everything if that makes sense. So anyway I've got two of these contactors the other thing I've got is this and this is a mechanical interlock and the reason why I've got this is because if you imagine we've got uh, the live and neutral or sometimes live neutral on earth from solar and we've got live and neutral from mains we can't allow both of them to join at the same time and usually that wouldn't happen because you'd only power one coil and then you'd power the other coil you wouldn't generally although you can there is an exception you wouldn't generally power both coils at the same time but if you did you wouldn't want both of them to come on at the same time so there's a provision and that's the mechanical interlock so we just put the mechanical interlock in there like that and then in the other side it goes in here like that and they're linked together now you can actually uh, there's a, supposed to be a pin or something that goes in here to lock them together here but I seem to have lost the pin anyway so that's the contactors put together so there's actually another thing which uh, we care about and that's the coil voltage inside there there's a coil and when you power the coil uh, it contacts and when you don't power the coil it doesn't contact and the coil has a voltage and you have to feed the coil with that voltage in this case this is a 24 volt DC coil and some of them are not 24 volts so you've got to choose the right one 24 volts is ideal for me though because my battery bank is 24 volts uh, DC so that's perfect for me now there's another thing as well which I should mention um, these contacts here are called NO contacts or normally open contacts and that means um, when there's no power to the coil these are open, open circuit but you should notice here there's one that says NC and that means normally closed so what happens is this is normally closed and all the rest are normally open but as soon as you power the coil that then changes to normally open and all of the rest become closed so I suppose it's a it's like loads of relays together although it's slightly different mechanically than a relay but essentially it's lots of relays uh, stuck together into one block and all uh, linked together there are other options you don't actually have to use contactors but I think they're probably the best you can also use relays or you could also uh, switch the poles uh, independently but that's not really a good idea because inside the contactors usually there's a mechanical linkage so that it switches them both at the same time or all of the poles at the same time and ideally that's what you want and especially with this ability to interlock them mechanically it's ideal there are different ways to wire these up um, for the automatic changeover switch uh, configuration there are different ways but I believe I know the fastest way uh, the easiest way and I think probably the best way um, but it, of course it does depend on your situation for me what I want to do is I want to power a load and I've got solar and mains that's what I want to do so I have to go back to the initial wording that I used um, I called this an automatic transfer switch or an automatic changeover switch and what do I mean by automatic well what I mean by that is there's no manual switch there's no manual switch to switch over uh, from one to the other it's an automatic changeover switch but there's a little bit more to it than say an automatic um, 
there are configurations whereby you can set the sync up to go off one power source and then automatically change over to the other power source when the coil is not powered on the original one. And that's an automatic transfer configuration too. Right, I've got my DC power supply and I've got the lead here. So the lead's going to be 24 volts because it's a 24 volt coil and ground. So I'll just put that to one side for now. And let's start wiring up. To start with, we're going to need to feed um, both coils with 24 volts. So I'll just move this slightly. And let's put these wires in here. So, uh, yeah, they're both being uh, parallel together. So parallel both coils together to 24 volts. Right, let me just make sure these are tight and in. It's tight. And that's tight. So that's going to be 24 volts. So this lead here is 24 volts. I might as well connect that now. 24 volts. There we go. The power supply is not on yet, but that's okay. Right, the next thing we need to do is um, get the minus. So let's put this in here. So it's the minus lead and the minus lead for this is coil 2. Okay, so I've got the minus lead. So now, of course, if I was to connect these uh, to ground, they'd um, they'd contact. So let's just try this out. So if I uh, connect this one, it should contact, and it does. And if I connect this one, this should contact, and it does. Right, so far so good. But what do we need to do now? Well. I said this was going to be an automatic transfer switch. So what I've got to do is um, I've got to control the coil voltage through a microcontroller. Well, I haven't got to, but, um, but that's the way I'm going to do it. So I'll just zoom out a little bit more so you can see. Right, so the stage we're at, we've got 24 volts to the coils. And here, we've, it's sort of open-ended. So what we need to do now is get a breadboard and uh, some components. And the components I'm going to use are actually quite simple. So I've got an Arduino Nano. I'll just push that in. I've got two um, power transistors. These are actually labelled uh, TIP41C. TIP41C. And I'm just going to push those in, uh, let's say, there. That will do. So push one in there and push the other one next to it like that. So I've got the two transistors in place. Right, so this is the right contactor and this is the left contactor, okay? So the way this works is there's a base, a collector and an emitter. So notice we're switching after the load, after the contactor coil. And this is called low switching or low side switching. And um, I won't go into that, but we're doing low side switching anyway. So we need to put that into, not the base, but the collector. So we'll put that into collector, which is the middle pin on this transistor, and the collector on this transistor too. So, right, we've got that plugged in. Now the next thing we need to do is, we need to join the emitter pins together. So there's one emitter, an emitter basically goes to ground. So we've got one, oh, pull it out there. So join that emitter to that emitter. So, so far so good. Now we need to join the emitters to ground. So emitters are pin three, so I've not left, left enough space there, so I'll just do it there, okay? So it's pin three of both emitters, basically. Uh, sorry, both transistors. And that is going to go to ground. Right, so the transistors are acting like switches. And um, what I have to do is I have to join uh, the base pins to digital pins on the Arduino. So 
Uh, they need to be PWM pins, and I know that the PWM pins on this, there are several actually, but the first ones are D3 and D5, so base to D3 and base to D5. So that's everything wired up now. So what this means is that the Arduino is in control of the transistors and the transistors are in control of switching the coils. And uh, of course what it means is that I can control uh, whether the coil is powered or not of both contactors. Um, so if I want solar on, I power that contactor. If I don't want solar on, I don't power that contactor and instead I power the mains contactor. And that's the way it works. So anyway, let's go over to the PC now and um, I'll write a quick sketch. So, uh, the sketch. We need to define two pins first. So define a mains pin. And that can be three. It should be mains pin. And we need to define the solar pin. And that can be five. And of course, there shouldn't be a space there. Then in the setup, we need to use pin mode. So pin mode, mains pin, and that's going to be used for output. Then pin mode, solar pin, now that's also going to be output. Okay, then what do you want to do on here? So in the loop, I'll just switch from one to the other. So the first thing we want to do is analog right, analog right, mains pin 255. So we're using PWM here, and uh, 255 means full on, zero means off. So what are we doing here? Analog right to the mains pin on. So what we're going to do basically is switch on the transistor which will then switch on the coil for the mains contactor. So then what we're going to do is we're going to put a delay in of 50 milliseconds and then after the 50 millisecond delay we're going to switch let's see, oh, analog right we're going to switch the solar pin off. And um, that doesn't appear to be very logical at the moment, but um, it will make sense in a minute, trust me. So delay 5000, so we want a delay of 5 seconds. So up to now, we've turned mains on, then we've got a delay of 50 milliseconds, and then we've turned solar off. Right? Then we've got a delay of 5 seconds, so in other words, Solar is off, mains is on, so we want mains to be on for 5 seconds. Then, analog right again. And now we want to turn solar on. So, solar pin, solar pin 255. So, we're going to turn solar back on. And then we want a delay of 50 milliseconds again. And then, we want to turn, let's see, analog right We want to turn mains off now. And then we want a delay of five seconds again. And that's it. So I'll just control and see that. So let's go through what's happening here again. So we've got mains on. Then we've got a delay of 50 milliseconds. And then we switch solar off. Then we've got uh, the mains on for five seconds. And after five seconds, we want to turn the solar on. So at this point, we've got mains and solar on. But of course, the, the mechanical interlock won't let solar on at the moment. Then after 50 milliseconds of solar pin being on, we're going to switch off the mains. And uh, and that will mean that solar's on. And then I've got this to repeat. So uh, that's a pretty simple sketch, really. But, um, but that's how it works. So you can see this 50 millisecond uh, delay here. This is where the two coils are charged effectively. So the reason I've... I've um, put one on 50 milliseconds before the other 
is so that there is no possible delay. So what it means is the only delay that we could possibly get is the delay which the mechanical interlock causes. So it should be as, you know, this should be the absolute fastest you can get this contactor to work. Anyway, so I'll just upload that to the sketch. What's happened here? Main pin. That should be mains pin. Let's re-upload. Okay, and I can hear the contactor uh, working now, so I'll just switch back over to the camera. Okay, so this is the end product. Um, so I've got the Arduino controlling two transistors. Each transistor powers a coil, or doesn't power it, but it allows a coil to be powered, switches it basically. And um, so it does that every five seconds, just for the example. But there's something a bit more special which I've touched on. And that is that actually when it switches over it powers the next coil that it's going to go to 50 milliseconds before switching off the old coil. And uh, what that does is it just reduces the delay as much as possible. So it makes sure that one coil is fully ready to go before the other one turns off. And what that means is the mechanical interlock is utilised um, and that's all it's utilised. That's the only thing that's really going to reduce speed, really, the mechanical interlock. So I believe that this is probably the fastest way you could actually um, wire these up to be an automatic transfer switch. And um, just lastly, here you go. Um, these multimeters are set up in resistance mode, so you can see what the resistance is. So right now, you can see that this one is, uh, well, okay, now it's open, and this one's closed and now this one's closed and this one's open and you can see that in the resistance there so um, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, thanks for watching and if you're not subscribed please click subscribe thank you bye